Happy 909 day. TR909 techno music levels and layers. Are you ready for that? That's today's video. Let's go do it right now. <laughs> Yo, what's up, I'm in the location and thank you for checking out yet another video. If this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you will not miss out on anything. So hang around till the end of this video, I'll tell you all about the kitchen club. Club. We're going to the crane in Amsterdam. Oh, I'm so excited for that. So I'll tell you all about it uh, towards the end of this video. Thanks for tuning in. Now it's TR909 day. Let me say it again. It's 909 day, which means I thought I'd do a video on the 909 drum computer. Now, obviously it's one of those iconic machines. It has created a lot of stuff. Uh, it's even to say that it invoked techno music back in the, what is it? Early 80s maybe 90s it is one of those iconic drum machines and i own one so i wanted to get into how to incorporate it within your set structure because the 909 it is something it's not great out of the box you need to look at it from a different angle and you have to understand where the sweet spots are so what i'm going to do is look at the kick drum tweak it a little bit, look at how you just layer out the sounds and maybe stick something of a new school, sort of like modern loop, or not even a modern loop, it might be an old school loop, but still from a more modern piece of kit and see if we can add all these things together. Now there's two synths that are also going to make an appearance today, which are the TBO3, because if it's 909 day, then obviously it, the TB303 cannot be left behind, and the AS1. So. Um, on this 909 day, it will be uh, an amazing journey, I guess. So, in short, we're going to get the 909 to work together with um, the AS1, with the TBO3. And um, let's see if we can make that work. You ready? Let's go. Happy 909 day. <laughs> TR909 day. I'm loving the TR909, but can we do something to get this thing to go do something with the modern boxes that we have? So what we have is got, we've got the, the Octatrack Mark II, we've got the MPC-1, then we've got the Multi-Clock, we've got a 10 time black box, we've got a MIDI fighter right here, the TBO3, there's an AS1 right here, there's a DM12 mixer, and then there's a digital delay DD7 right here, and ha ah, here it is, the TR909. Now I've got the uh, multi-clock all filled up nice and tightly what i'm going to do is hit a groove on uh, 130 bpm what i have done though is i've spread out three different channels out of the 909 because i want to have control separately over the right symbol that i'm using for this sort of like jam uh the rest of the stereo which is the hats and whatever i'm going to add the claps and then the kick drum as well now i have got on channel one. The MPC one connected to the Octatrack. You know by now if you watch this channel that those two are joined at the hip. So playing this would mean that this one would start as well. This thing is only collecting MIDI information of the subsequent and the uh, mini tower. 
which I'm not making an appearance today. So obviously this thing is not going to do much today. This has got this own, their own sequence. It's the Torise AS1. That's got their, their own sequence. So the channel four is the TBA3. Nice. Now on the uh, mixer over here, I've kind of mapped out um, the, the, the tracks where I am. So the red button here is going to be the kick drum coming out of the um, TR. And I think I've got the drum sitting next to it. No, this is my TB, uh, TBR3. So obviously this is all going to be, yes, drums. So the kick is going to be on red. So now when I hit the 909, a kick drum should play. Now I am in pattern ride mode, which means that as soon as it starts to run, this thing is going to blink, which means I cannot switch between the patterns. Uh, but I will copy patterns over as we go. But I have to do that while it's, while it's not running. So on track two, not mistaken, is going to be my 909. Let's start with the first pattern. Like, obviously not. There you go. Nice. Now, when I'm going to look at levels, I think it's important to uh, memorize where everything pretty much sits within my uh, set space here. Um, the TBO3 has got its own sort of space. It's not that loud. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit. And the trick is to listen to every transient that you can hear. Now this kick drum does not contain as much low end as the modern day kick drum, obviously. This thing stems from a different time. The architecture was different, but it does the trick as it works on any kind of sound system. Let's just listen to what's happening first. Okay, so this kick consists of a few different um, elements. And I will excuse uh, beforehand for the crackling knobs because this is okay. You know? Okay. So it's the volume right here. We've got our attack here. We've got some decay. And then we've got the tuning. Now, usually what I see a lot of people do, and what we used to do when we were playing hardcore back in the days, we needed as much transients as we could because we were going to overdrive the TR909, obviously. So you needed a lot of high-end content. Bright. A little bit more muffled. Now, what I would love is the tune to go on some on something like 12 o'clock because then the attack re, um, uh, resembles a little bit of the 808. I'm going to take out a little bit of that bright attack here and shorten the decay. So you can clearly hear that th, 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 the letter D as an attack. And then there's a little bit of a belly of the kick is what I call it. So the release will be, well, well, obviously. So this sound consists of two sounds, right? I love the sound design on the 99 because it's very straightforward. Um, if you know what you're looking for, it does the trick. Now, let's open up the TBO3. And the trick is to add the TBO3 to the kick without losing any of the transients that we've just introduced. That's the main trick. If that starts to happen, it means the foundation of your house is going to like wither away a little bit and that's not what you would want. Two things that you can do then is either lower the TBO3 or tweak the filter in a way that it's getting away from the um, kick drum because the kick drum has to be our most dominant culprit in the room. So I'm gonna turn it down. A little bit in the way still and what you can also do is introduce a little bit of overdrive on the tbo3 i know that maybe the td3 and the uh, zoxbox and stuff they might not have an overdrive knob i use overdrive uh, on the tbo3 because it gets that um warehouse kind of uh, strobo smoke machine sound going uh, and it takes out low end so let's do that as well see now, now we've got our kick Nice. What else have we got? Woo! The almighty 909 hat. Now this hat is not as loud as the kick drum because listen to how loud it is. I think it's very loud. It will, it will constantly just be 
all over the place. So I'm going to stick this on one o'clock maybe. If you don't have a, t uh, a 909, but you've got like some sort of an uh, emulation, um, it could work, right? It, just do the same things that I'm doing. So the level is on one o'clock. And then the decay is on 12 o'clock. Because when I lower it, I lose a lot of volume. And I need a little bit of dirt. This thing has got some, yeah, dirt, maybe some saturation on it. That's just the way it sounds. I'm loving it. I'm liking that. Now the right symbol is also playing already. I'm going to instrument select and I'm going to hit right. You can see on 3, 7, 11 and 15, same place where the high hat's playing, that I've got a right symbol. And the right symbol I've got on the green knob sitting right here. So I'm taking out the kit and then I'm going to open up both those faders. You can hear that the rise is a little bit on the loud side, but you know, we love that. So I'm turning that down. So this polymeter just keeps running, which is what I like. Constantly introducing some sort of a hypnotizing bass line. Um, you can play around with it. Take out the kick. Right out. So every time when I introduce a switch in my pattern, a switch in my music, I will take something out and add something to it. Especially with a TBO3, every step can be done very gently. So what you would not want to do is just like uh, jump to conclusions fast and just run, never be in a hurry, right? Now, the AS1 is going to do a song and dance with a TBO3. Let's see how that handles itself. And again, I'm backing off on the TBO3 here because I need everything to just like keep going. Bam, bam, Woo. Happy 909 day, guys. Now, instead of instantly hitting the filter on the AS1, what I will do first is I'll take out a little bit of that gritty transient of my hat, right? So usually I'll take out the kick and do it, but now I'll just leave my kick running and just gradually back it off so you know what's happening. Listen. And instantly, if you notice it, I'll just go back up to 12 o'clock in a second, you'll notice that if this sound starts to shorten, the more percussive sounds that you're hearing from the AS1 and from the TBO3 are starting to just like become a little bit more audible, obviously, because this thing is like a blanket. It smears a lot of transients all over the place. And it's more of a flowy thing, which is what you need later on in your track when stuff starts to metabolize a little bit more and you're starting to kick people in the face more, right? So turn it down. Okay, now I'm trying to introduce, I'm going to introduce this Torise AS1. It has got a arpeggio that I've programmed by means of sticking this thing on a computer and I'm working with the third party editor and just getting stuff going, right? Cool. Okay, let's turn off the 909 here. The 909 here. I'm still gonna need to get my bearings here. Okay, 909 is on three. Help me remember. 909 three. Turn this down a little bit. Turn this up a little bit. I've also got that delay sitting here, so on my AS1, as you can hear. So by means of sending auxiliary one to this digital delay, I am going to add a little bit of space on there. Nice one. Back off on the delay, play the kick. And do you notice how both those sounds are playing together? Let's turn off the TBO3 and then you'll hear you'll miss it. See, it's gone now. Back off on the delay a little bit. Open up the filter. 
shorten the notes. Turn this back on. And a trick, obviously, because we're talking about three octaves on the TB03, 303 as well. So this is down minus 12. This will be zero. This will be plus 12. So you can play around with that as well. Mind you though, the higher the notes are, the louder it will become. And we're also looking at sound levels. So mean, all the time I'm listening to this kick drum. So is, am I starting to overrule the kick drum? No, not yet, but it means backing stuff up. And also sometimes you might overrule the kick drum a little bit, but at the same time, if you go back to where you were, where this can take over again, then people will notice that there's something uh, off with the mix. But uh, playing dollar stuff means focusing attention to what it is that you're doing. As long as you come back to what works on the speaker, you should be sweet really, you know? But by playing this and this, a long time then uh, uh, people are starting to think like okay it's very dominant in my face so this i would only use as means of an accent okay go head in and the fun part with this is i mean i keep telling people i don't equalize i don't compress but at the same time i don't have to because obviously um the filter is the equalizing part of it, right? I mean, obviously this is a frequency filter, so yeah, there's less highs here and more highs over here. So I mean, if you put this on a scope, obviously you'll see that it will shift through the frequency spectrum. So I'm not per se using a equalizer in that sense, but I will still figure out like, okay, can I get stuff to sit next to something else, right? Cool, okay, I'm gonna turn off the TBO, uh, the, the TR909. I'm gonna go to a different pattern. Now that I'm on pattern two, it means that I can add stuff to it or play different things. Uh, I'd like to do something with a clap here. So what I would do is play it, turn this down. I'm just gonna set the music in the sense that the music is just sitting there and you know, I'm not going to focus too much on sound design. It's all about the TR9. Happy 909 day, by the way. Okay, let's do a drinking game. Whenever I say happy 909 day, you open up a can of whatever and just take a sip, all right? Let's do that, all right? You ready? Happy 909 day. Cool. Okay, next pattern. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, first I'm going to go in pretty basic, right? So I'm going to just like set a clap on, on the half of the measure, like so. I can even play around with it. Take out a kick. So that's what I do. I do a song and dance where I enter notes and take out notes and play around with the kick. That's why I want my kick to be separately be playing on a different channel, like so. Nice one. Right. Now the thing with the 909 is if you want to copy a pattern over, it works in a way it's not as um, um, logical as you would you do with other pieces of gear. I mean, even with the Octatrack to just like um, copy a pattern over is, is easier than on a, a 909. So say if we want a pattern, um, if we want pattern three to just do what pattern two is doing, I first have to select the pattern 
I'm holding shift, I'm holding copy, then I'm hold, pressing two, and then I'm pressing enter, and then you see it jump over to three, which means that pattern two is now on pattern three, which means on pattern three I can add stuff. There's two ways of looking at the 99. Either you just play a completely full pattern, like with everything guns blazing, rides, toms, everything in there, and just dilute it. That's how I usually do it. So my pattern 16 would always be an empty pattern, because if I'm getting like, ah, I don't know where I'm going, I'm gonna hit 16. I know it keeps running, but nothing's playing. So that's a breakdown of some sort. So similarly to what you're hearing right now. Um, the extra step that I've added to be safe uh, with, if you're doing this with multiple pieces of gear, is the multi-clock then. So then the multi-clock is taking care of that stuff. So I'm like, ah, three or three, come on. You know what I mean? Just turn it off like so. You're thinking, that's nice. Now I want that, and that to start is like, you know what I mean? Easy. So this is my pattern three that is playing. Wouldn't it be nice to just like go in and change that clap around a little bit more to where it just does a straight on the one clap, go in a little bit more techno maybe? So, so I'm going to instrument select the hand clap, which is playing now, but da -da 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 -da. you can see it. I can either clear it like so, if I'm lazy, or I can just like take it out, the notes out manually. Now, we're going to set the clap on the kick. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, four. Bam, two, two, boom, ba dam, bam, da ba da ba 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 da. Jam around with it, right? So now we've got our. Yeah, I'm liking this. Da ba dam, da. I'm gonna take that out. Take the last one out. Cool. That's playing, right? Now I'm gonna turn this off, and you have to understand that I have to press this. Now I'm in pattern play mode, which means that I can now play those different patterns, which means, you see that it plays this, pattern one, no clap, pattern two, clap, tap, get up, 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 take out the kick, two, one, two, three, third pattern, clap, 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 tap, tap, get up, tap. And that's how you would work it. I love this um, simple approach of the 909 because um, it forces you to think differently than you would if you were to play something else. Now, in terms of levels, I am going to stick a drum loop, which is coming from the Octatrack into my 909. And if, I'm, if I do it correctly, it sounds like the whole thing is like a unified uh, sound, right? If I screw it up, it means Mm, you can place those different sounds apart and that's not uh, what we would want. So I am going to play my first pattern and then I'm going to take out whatever is not supposed to play, so the right symbol is not supposed to play, and I will see. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, I know that's playing, but obviously another fail safe is the mixer that I have. So everything is already playing, but I decide what you hear, then I can turn it up, turn it, and then you will hear what happens. So we'll play the kick. So I know where I am. I think we're going to do a little bit more attack on the kick. Nice. For the breakbeat. Nice. I think that is a bit of a lag or something that's not really going in the right direction. That's why I also love the multi clock. So what I can do now is push or pull on the 909. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Turning this thing, th those big knobs on the multi clock are all pretty much when they're on 12 o'clock, um, telling everything to just start at zero. And then you can see on the screen even that my channel three is um, in a negative value right now, which means that if I'm pressing it, if I'm turning it to the left from 12 o'clock, it starts to make sure that the 99 becomes faster. Yeah? So, turn the music off, then we can hear that. So you can hear what's happening, right? Obviously, I know a lot of DJs that play like this. I'm not gonna name any names. Here you go. Bam, bam, bam. So you can see that this being the MPC and the uh, Octatrack, that I need to adjust it a little bit. 
you would say that after 30 years of MIDI, they might have overcome this problem, but thank the Lord for the multi club, right? Okay, cool. So, nice. Now, let's focus on those drums and those levels again, yeah? Right, let's listen to it. Well, I think it was cool where it was, really, but it drifts. That's the 909. It will drift. But it's 909 day, so obviously it means that you can, um, yeah, you can do whatever it wants on 909 day. 909 day is one of the best days, so 909 day is the day that where the 909 can do whatever it wants. Yeah? Okay, hat. Woohoo! Oh yeah. That's a big fat 808 that I've got lined up in here as well, which I can add at a later point. Shall we, um, since it's 909 day, shall we um, introduce the 303 again, or shall we do the AS1 again? Um, what would you like? Let me know. There's a drum roll that I've got here, sitting on channel three. It's just mapped to the volume on the Octatrack. So obviously I would not prefer to do this with the um, kick playing. Again, so there's another interaction that you can do playing live. Whoa, bam. A lot of stuff that I saw on different live sets is where people program everything and then just turn stuff on and off. And I used to be like that for a while, but then thinking you're playing live, how much is live then? You know, it's not that live. Um, and then I spoke to a, a, a friend of mine, Robert Babich, and he said, you know, Lucian, I'd love to play a little bit more live on stage. So if, if I'm going through the uh, perils of taking all the crap to the stage, at least I want to play something live. And it, it got me thinking, I said, well, Robert, you've got a point right there. But I was a bit chicken shit in the beginning because you now have to play stuff and what if it goes wrong? And I'm not the best like virtuoso keeper player in the world. So I played it safe. Now though, um, yeah, I've, I've gotten more, um, uh, advance and experience with playing so it's cool to just do it like that and again um, my point is you want to have something that looks live as well I mean a guitar player that's just standing there having uh, programmed everything as you're standing there with the guitar like that that just doesn't make any sense right so obviously you would love to have something that is um, also something you can utilize live other than the filters so that's why I try to just like jam it out with the with the drums um, jam it out with the drum rolls as well and then you know take out the kick you know it just looks different okay we're going to add the 303 because I see a lot of 303 on 909 here we go If you tune in late, it's drinking time. Whenever I say 909 day, you have to take a sip of an alcoholic beverage. That's how we're doing it today. Okay, um, shall we add, um, I think we're going to add that 909, oh, that 808 tall one, yeah? To get it with the right symbol, like so. Oh, that's another contrast. Um, if you want to make a big impact on a sound system, or if you want to make a, an impact on a big sound system, let me put it that way, a cool thing is to add both the opposite frequencies at once. So from the minute you're going to add that really low end, like I've got here, boom, which you can only hear if you're listening to a great speaker. So I'm hoping you've got a good headphone uh, on, or you're listening to decent speakers on this uh, uh, 909 day today. Uh, it means, it will just open up a whole lot of uh, adrenaline on people. People go, like, oh my heaven, what's happening? You know, and then um, you can open up a filter here and take out the right symbol again. And play around with where you would like stuff to go. Okay, turn it down. Turn on the AS1. And since we just turned off the right symbol, then we've got something, we've got some room uh, left. Because in terms of the frequency spectrum, the low end would be the kick drum, and then that mid range is a bit like the drum loop, and then you know, the 808 obviously just filling up a whole lot of rumble in the bottom end. So you have to keep in mind, maybe we can do that. Yes, we can. This. This would be a problem most of the time, right? We've got this 808 uh, sitting right here. 
but anyway it's pretty much related to the TBO3 because it's I mean compressors and big sound systems would not love this to happen so keep in mind that uh, if there are higher transients on your kick drum that you can hear or there is something more uh, prominent in terms of articulation on the sound that you use from the TBO3 then you can set them apart it doesn't matter that they overlap it doesn't matter if something is cancelling each other out as long as the uh, dominant um, accent of the of the theme that's being played is very audible then people might forgive you and I do this this any sound engineer will say like what the hell are you doing but as long as I'm putting something else um, in place that does the articulation for me like that kick on the 909 which is just here then you're not so much paying attention to this you will feel the the, the oomph of the 808 you will hear the the polymetric nature of the tbr3 but the drums is what you're dancing on so nobody's gonna say dude what the hell man you got the frequencies that cancel each other out, you know what I mean? So you have to do that song and dance with where you think everything is. I think I'm pretty much going to wrap it up. Drum roll. What we're going to add? Uh, the right. Nice. And obviously you can play around with the different pattern. What's not to like here, right? Alright. <laughs> you still standing? Okay, well, this is my way of working it. I'd like to just like put the nuggets of information in a more um, uh, self-contained story. Uh, so I would not go like chapter, 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 chapter. This is it, this is that. I mean, to work a dollar's life set is to be on the flow, be on a roll with, with how these things are working most of the time is my experience. And then um, the way I handle it, the way I would do it on stage, the way I would um, interpret certain things, that's just how I look at this way of working, really. Now, thank you for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you, I'm talking about you, you're an absolute superstar on this uh, TR909 uh, 909 day. So um, let me know what you use if you don't have a 909. Um, let me know how you would use something else. Uh, let me know if you can apply these things. If you have a 909, let me know how, how you work your 909. Obviously, I'm always here to learn um, on this 909 day, especially. So I'd say uh, the Kitchen Club is going to Amsterdam. That's going to be next weekend. We're going to be in the crane. Now, the crane is Dare I say it? Yeah, I do, I think. It's the most expensive hotel in Amsterdam. I mean, I think a room will do four to five thousand dollars a night. There's only two rooms there because it is a crane. And then on this first sort of like floor, the owner, which is a good friend of mine, he just throws techno parties. I mean, everyone is played there. Skrillex is played there. Taylor was is played there. Maceoplex is played there. Um, Butson's played there. They've all been there. And it's just a small club, as in 70 people. That's that. You cannot fit any more people in there. So this is a ex very exclusive party for the hardcore kitchen clubbers out there. Um, we just wanted to do it because now we get to just like stand closer to our crowd. We can just like interact a little bit more. Um, people, if they have questions while we're doing it, you know, they can just come up. And it's more, more of a community-based thing. Um, obviously so that's um, uh, a cool thing ade as well we are looking at the wednesday night for amsterdam dance event also at the crane so that's going to be an amazing thing but to roll stuff out first and touch the waters see how the sound is going to work we're working with a new sound company so we are definitely going to look at how all these things are going to work um, um yeah so um that's the crane i'm going to throw a link down in the description if you're in Holland, if you want to go check it out uh, and do act fast because with 70 people, it's just 50 tickets basically. And then, you know, 70 people, everyone, that's just everyone can, no more than 70 people can fit in there. So that's the kitchen club. I'm very excited that we're going to this uh, location on uh, 9 or 9 day that I can uh, tell you that. Now, um, there's a lot of stuff happening. We are going to start looking at the vinyl releases. I'm almost finished with my 
release, which is going to be the first release on Kitchen Club Records. And then afterwards, I'm going to make music with you guys. I mean, it's been taking like forever, obviously. Um, but it's just a two, three guy operation here and we're doing a lot of stuff at the moment. That's why things lag a little bit. So excuse for that. It is coming. We are working it. The label is getting up and running at the minute. It's really cool. Halil, who's the label manager, is uh, going through the demos and listening to all the stuff. And he's like, okay, there's so much good music. So that's cool. Which brings me to the Patreon slash Discord community. Uh, I'm making music with you guys out there. You know what I mean? Uh, after this video tonight on 909 uh, day, we're actually going to have a little bit of a video after party chat where we talk about different things uh, considering the topic or what everybody wants to just talk about basically uh, gear uh, gas related which is a cool thing uh, and I am making music with you lot out there it's cool so the higher up tier patrons obviously will uh, um, uh, get their uh, more dominant predominant sort of like uh, influence on the music and then the, the next years down we'll do remixes and everything. but it's a cool community where we want to work together uh, and we're embracing that it's a growing community as well so thanks for supporting uh, go find that on patreon.com slash analog kitchen if you want to know more about this stuff um, if this went too fast or you just want to uh, have your um, information be done a little bit more in a logical sense than analog courses is still in development but uh, getting close to completion at the minute so if you enrolled um, yeah it's coming um, which means this is a course on dollar gear on how to work it so pretty much like the videos I'm doing but a little bit more in depth on okay so in this case you should do this and that and, and consider this and options and you get the music and the midis and all that kind of stuff so you know how that's working um, I guess that that is that I would like to say I salute you you 909 day dweller and thank you for watching i'm in a location um if not anything else i'll catch you next week you know where on another video i'm in a location out <laughs>